Hello folks and welcome to the weekend warm-up from the paddock here at the Bahrain International Circuit for the second week in a row. Bill Buxton, Lawrence Barreto and an awful lot to talk about. <laughs> it's been a busy few days isn't it? Normally between a back-to-back -back race you might get a day or two off. No such thing this time round. Lewis Hamilton obviously got Covid-19. Fortunately mild symptoms but it means he can't be in the car this weekend. That means that these guys became a massive talking point. Down at Williams, yes, uh, because Mercedes' first choice was to get George Russell into that car to replace Lewis, and they got their wish. George goes to Mercedes. In at Williams comes Jack Aitken from Formula 2, uh, which means I'm going to need to find a new co-host for <laughs> the F1 Live post-race show. It's a huge... Let's start at Williams, because we're down here at Williams. Mm -hmm. It's a huge opportunity for Jack. Great guy, difficult F2 season, um, but super talented, respected, loved in this paddock at Renault, at Williams, diligent, hardworking, he's a good egg. Yeah, and these days for rookies, it's really difficult for them to have an opportunity to show their potential mm. because there's so little testing. Jack had a go in the car earlier this year in Austria, and that was great, but it's only an FP1. Yeah. This weekend, to have a whole weekend, three practice sessions, qualify in the race, work with the team, go through a proper race program, it's massive for him. And this is the thing, you look even at Nico Hulkenberg and the stand-in jobs that he mm -hmm. did this year at Racing Point, he never got a full weekend. Yeah. And reserve drivers very rarely do because a driver will get injured or, or will fall ill or something like that and it'll happen in the middle of a weekend. These guys standing in, they're going to get, as you say, all the practice sessions, quali, the race. It's a proper weekend and they've been here since Monday getting themselves embedded, seat fit, everything. And for Williams, it's really important for them to get a driver that can hopefully hit the ground running because yeah. they're trying to get ninth in the Constructors' Championship. There's only three points between them they've not scored, admittedly, since. But if they can get above them, that's huge for prize money. And for a team down this end of the grid, that means something. It really does. Um, let's keep walking because the team that they are in that fight with for ninth, eighth place in the Constructors' Championship is Haas. And of course, uh, we look back just a few days to the Bahrain Grand Prix, the sickening accident for Romain Grosjean, but he's okay. He was in the paddock earlier today, hobbling. He's got his, his uh, left foot in a boot, boot. Uh, some soft tissue damage there from, from the, the, the accident itself, uh, bandaged hands. But other than that, it's remarkable. I still find the entire thing unfathomable. It's... It's incredible, really, what happened, that he is, was here, mm. even in the paddock today, just days after that accident. Yeah. But also that he's got this permanent smile on his face. And yes. I think, I just get the impression he's just, he's just so happy to be here in the state that he is at the moment. Well, I think and he's just happy to be yeah, here. Yeah, sorry. So not just in yeah. the place, but, but... In the world. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's what he said, you know. You know I'm just, just happy to still be alive. And he was hugging the uh, Ian and Alan from the medical car oh, nice. and the, the, the fire marshals who'd we would run across the track to help him and he hugged him and just said, you know, like, you saved my life. Yeah. It's uh, an astonishing thing. And I think that's why he wants to be in the car in Abu Dhabi. He, yeah. he doesn't want his F1 story to end like the way that it did, obviously, with that accident. He wants to get in there one more time, get behind the wheel and hopefully leave with a smile. Yeah, I, I really hope he gets that opportunity. If not, though, Pietro Fittipaldi, who is uh, replacing him for this weekend, will be the replacement in, uh, in Abu Dhabi as well. Pietro's a great kid. Uh, another F1 live post-race <laughs> show host. Um, Just ticking them off. I mean, that's it. You want to you be a reserve <laughs> driver and get a seat in 2020 F1? Be a co-host? Actually, can't say that because Stoffel was co-host Stoffel didn't quite well. make it, yeah. yeah poor Stoffel. Um, but yeah, uh, I, we wish Pietro well. For Pietro and Jack, it's going to be a, a tough, tough weekend because, you know, the teams are not uber competitive. The cars are difficult to drive. It's not going to be an easy weekend for either of them. No, and just kind of being dropped in, parachuted into a team, um, as exciting as, and as I hope you can be as prepared as possible, it's not an easy thing to do. And so for Pietro, even though he's been around the team for a long time, he's got to know the guys very well, this is a whole other level for him. It's stepping up to be a, a race weekend driver, a Formula One driver, and it's going to be a big thing for him. You said it's going to be difficult because of the car that he's got. Yeah. We're on this short layout. So it's, it's, yeah. it's good in some ways, but it's going to be very busy out there. You mentioned the layout. Of course, for those that don't know, we're back at the same track we were at one week ago, but the layout has changed. Essentially, when you get up to the top of the track at turn four, where they would normally loop back down the hill, they now take a little wiggle <laughs> through the hills 
and then attach themselves to the back stretch. We're expecting four, 53, 54 second laps. Yeah, it's a super quick lap now, and that's why we're going to probably have 89 laps, I think it was, yeah, I think it is. in total. And the lap's so short that it's going to work out about two seconds, two and a half seconds between each car when they're all out on the track. Yeah. And that is going to be problematic in Q1 in qualifying. Particularly in qualifying. I was talking to Tom Stallard from uh, McLaren earlier, um, just on the way down actually, so to, to come and film this. And uh, he was saying that in qualifying is going to be crazy. Mm -hmm. Also in the race itself, choosing when to pit, you've got a 55 second lap, 23 second pit delta. <laughs> it's, it's half yeah. the lap. Exactly, and so strategy-wise, we're probably going to end up on a one-stopper because you're going to want to minimise the amount of time that Absolutely. you have to go into the pit lane. Yeah, it's going to be a fascinating one. Um, now, we split the honours in the pen earlier, so I didn't get to talk to everybody today. Mm -hmm. um, I did talk to the Alfa Romeo guys, of course, still in that battle with Haas mm -hmm. uh, and Williams over those, those final few points in relatively good spirits, but it's going to be a tough weekend for the Ferrari-powered cars because this is... 75% of the lap on full throttle. Yes, and I think for Alfa Romeo, they're probably going to be quite pleased that they've got that points buffer over their two main rivals because it's going to be difficult, I think, this weekend for any of those three teams to be contending for points. One team that was in very good contention for points last time out was racing. Point, um, Checo on for a podium and then just that galling engine failure at the end and all the dreams shattered. That third place that they'd taken in the Constructors' Championship in Turkey suddenly disappears and goes to McLaren, that huge swing of points. And as a result of that, he's got an old engine in the back of his car. He's got an old floor because he burnt through the new floor. So Racing Point are in a pretty tricky spot in this fight for third at the moment. Yeah, and it's, that means it's going to be such a difficult weekend for Checo in many ways mm. versus Lance because obviously he doesn't have any of those new bits. He looked really down, I thought, today. Um, I think the pain of losing that podium is still, is still hurting him. Yeah, and also I, I think that that falls into your belief that Alex Albon mm -hmm. keeps getting more and well closer and closer to cementing that place on the grid next year. And also, Checo was very mindful after the the race last time, you know, with the accident that happened to 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 Roman about the fact that actually my podium win or lose a podium, it doesn't matter. It's another trophy. Mm -hmm. All that matters is actually that Roman's okay. Checo is a very mindful, very spiritual guy. I'm pretty sure last weekend is, is still having an effect on him, is still mm -hmm. shaking him up. And what he said to me today was, look, I'm not going to take a third driver role because mm -hmm. honestly, it doesn't interest me. And after last weekend, I know what I want and I'm only going to take what's right for me. I'm not going to take something as a, you know, as a consolation. I just want to do what I want to do because the rest of it's not worth it. It's just not worth risking myself for, for doing something I don't want to do. If he's going to have to travel the world as well, um, he doesn't want to do that as a reserve driver sitting around. He'd much yeah. rather spend it with his family. Yeah. Um, so I think that that is almost a, no, it's a non-starter. That's why it's either a sabbatical or Red Bull. If, however, he's got a good car underneath him this weekend, I mean, he was bolted on last weekend, race pace looked good. Red Bull today have said they don't think they've got decent race pace. Mm -hmm. If that racing point looks good out here, and this is another thing that McLaren are worried about, yeah. Checo could be on for a win. For as bold, long as... No, but for as, for as long... That's, that's not my thoughts, their thoughts. Okay. For as long as Lewis is away... Well, yes. The potential for how this affects the midfield battle and that battle for third and the constructors could be heavily influenced by... The racing points being competitive. If, if, if George Russell in that Mercedes isn't up to pace mm -hmm. and isn't fighting for a win or podium, and it allows a racing point onto the podium, or a Renault or a McLaren, it could help either one of them. But that's, that is this thing now, with Lewis being out for one, potentially two races. How does that affect the battle for third? It's, it's a knock-on effect all the way down. This is it. I think when McLaren had that swing of points last weekend, you could have thought, well, that's quite a chunky points gap they've mm. now got over. But like you just said, it's only going to take up a, a podium and it swung completely back in the other direction. Exactly, exactly. Uh, Alpha Tauri have been the fly in the ointment in that battle for mm -hmm. third by consistently getting up into the top 10, consistently fighting their way up into those places. Gasly, another brilliant race last time out. Um, safety car at the end, saved his bacon. Mm -hmm. But uh, again, you know, expecting good things. You spoke to the guys today, Alpha Tauri, how are they? So Alpha Tauri, for whatever reason, in, especially in their old form, Toro Rosso, always perform well in Bahrain. Yes. And that was another example of just their car seems to quite go quite well here. Like you said, Pierre was a little bit surprised, I think, at the ultimate pace that they got, the ultimate result that they got. But Danny Kvyat was only a point away, a place away from getting a point. Yeah. So there's no reason why they aren't going to be in contention again uh, this weekend. Renault, what do we think of them for this weekend? 
Um, I think that this weekend's going to be much better for them than the last weekend, mainly because it's more they've improved on the low, low downforce elements of their car. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've got this coming this weekend. So I think that it should be a stronger weekend overall for both of them. And that's what both drivers were talking about early on today. It was really surprising. They did so well in quali and the pace just seemed to disappear from them in the race. Yeah, and I think, if I'm truthful, they don't quite know exactly why that is. Okay. Um, they still need a little bit more time to work it out. Uh, they understand that obviously tyre management was key, but they know that they didn't play their race out perfectly. And I think if they made, hadn't made like little decisions that went the other way, say, um, they feel, I think, that Daniel Ricciardo could have been much higher up. One of the batteries in your shoes has run out. Oh, no. Oh, no, I, thought I thought it was this one that was no, going to go I'm, first. I'm disappointed that you don't have new shoes. I've got new shoes this week. Oh, all right. I've gone for the Riviera douchebag look. Um, you look very comfortable Thanks. in that look. Is George that... Russell said that he liked the trousers and that they look very, very comfortable. I think he meant because they look like pyjama trousers. <laughs> anyway, um, McLaren, we are down here now. As you said, third place in the Constructors' Championship now looking great, but one good result for either Renault or Racing Point and the whole thing's turned around again. Yes, so talking to Lando and uh, Carlos today, I think they were surprised at how well things went last weekend and that's why they want to play things down a little bit this weekend. But both of them are driving really well and that team is yeah. operating really well. So I don't really see why we should rule them out of anything more than an outside chance for a podium. Still split by one point, mm -hmm. the two drivers. Interestingly, they've got two drivers that are firing and at Racing Point and at Renault, sorry to say it, but the majority of weekends, it's usually one driver's on, one driver's mm -hmm. off that consistency could be the thing that nets them that third place. I think, if anything, that's what's kept them in this battle all the way up yeah. until this point. Um, so it'll be interesting to see whether they can kind of carry that forward. It's going to be a bit more difficult because it's a low downforce setup, so that it might not suit them as much. But um, I think Renault probably going to be stronger than them this weekend if they get everything right. Um, but as long as they do the best job operationally, that's the best that they can do. You spoke to the Red Bull guys who you said don't seem to be that confident this weekend. No, both of them, both Alex and Max, uh, are slightly concerned that the, the power deficit that they suffer versus Mercedes is going to hold them back a little bit. Mm. I would have thought, at least based on what they came out with last weekend and the fact that Red Bull in the generally on a trajectory of catching Mercedes, they'll felt a little bit more confident. I think they might just be playing things down because this is a huge opportunity really for them with Lewis not being here. Well, that's it, isn't it? You don't want to say, yeah, it's great. Lewis isn't here. This is our best opportunity for a win and they don't win. It's, yeah, egg on your face time for them if that if that happens. So play down, play down, play down. But as you were saying, if the Alpha Towery guys are feeling good about the weekend and they've mm -hmm. got the same lump in the back as well, Red Bull have, why would Red Bull be feeling less confident than Alpha Towery? Exactly. And I also think they've got an Alex Albon at the moment who is riding high on confidence. Well, you interviewed him. You did a proper sit down with him. How is he? Um, he was the happiest, most relaxed, most confident I've seen him all year. Uh, he's had two weekends, one result that's been really strong. He seems to have unlocked something, both in combination of him personally and the team around him, but also the car is obviously moving in a direction that suits him a little bit more. Um, I just get a vibe, and we've, I've said this a lot, yeah. and you know what I'm going to say, yeah. but I think he's going to be around next but that's year. That's the thing, you say Checo, Checo miserable, Alex really happy, happier than you've seen him all year, maybe it's done. Maybe it's done. And, uh, you know, two podiums in, I think, six or seven races. And I think the critical thing is he's showing that he's turned a corner, even if the results aren't following up. And the fact that Christian and Helmut consistently, like, week in, week out, yeah, are backing him. Backing I him. think that's got to say something at this point in time. Ferrari are not expecting a good weekend at all. It's a power-sensitive circuit. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, they think it's going to be a really hard one. You know what, I think they were disappointed with how things went last time in Bahrain, or, sorry, on the last layout in Bahrain. So it doesn't surprise me that with this layout, they don't think it's going to be worse yeah. given the power issues. Um, I'm, I'm sad really, because obviously it would be nice if Seb could have a stronger end to his time at Ferrari. Uh, but Charles, I, I just think that I'm so impressed with the way he deals with this situation week in, week out. In the fight for fourth in the Drivers' Championship, he, said, he said to me today, like, if you told me that in Austria, no way. No way would I believe that this could be possible. He's had a great season. And again, you know, Bahrain, the car clearly wasn't up to it. But a brilliant drive from Charles, bringing it up into a place where it had no right to be in the early running and fell back as the race went on. But just another brilliant, battling, gutsy drive that, that just shows what a quality, quality racer uh, Charles is. Not to take anything away from, from Seb, but no. Charles is just a shining star. Uber consistent. Now, Mercedes. Lewis isn't here. George is in his car. 
but it's not as simple as plug in racing no. driver, racing driver wins racing car. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, if only it was that easy. Uh, right? Um, <laughs> we would say he has uh, large shoes to fill. He actually has, well, his shoes are too large. Uh, <laughs> the size 11 boots won't fit in the tub, so he's had to go down a size. So he's, yeah, so he's going to have his toes curled around. In That'd the be cosy. More than cosy, it's been, been painful for him. So he's already trying to fit in. I said I was, I was talking to him earlier, um, and he's just getting used to the closed confines of, of the cockpit. He says he finds it very tight compared to the Williams. Mm -hmm. He's trying to learn the new steering wheel, including DAS, which he will have the use of if the team determines that DAS is necessary for this track. So he's having to learn a very complex, complicated steering wheel, the mm -hmm. likes of which no other team has in the sport. It's, it's a massive challenge, um, but I think what's impressed me most about George since he's entered Formula One is his ability to take on a challenge and hit it head on. And he spends hours doing his homework. He yeah. spends tons of time with the guys. For the most time that we've been in the paddock these last couple of days, he's been sat out on that terrace yeah, having has. meetings with his engineers. He's trying to do everything that he can to prepare himself as best he can for this weekend and then, you know, come what may. And oddly enough, the pressure's off him. He just has to turn up and, and do the best job that mm -hmm. he can in the full knowledge that the team have been watching him and they know how good he is. He just needs to get his head down and try his best. And, and really, he can't lose. The one guy that can, though, is Valtteri. And I don't think he's going to be sleeping all that soundly this week. No, and he was asked in the written press conference, uh, you know, what's going to happen if you get beaten by George? Yeah. And he, he, he was quite honest. And he said, well, I don't know. I haven't really thought about that. You could have cut the atmosphere <laughs> with a cricket stump. It was, it was really, like, like quite on the, on the, on the money. Obviously, Valtteri's contracted next year, so he, you know, he's got a seat for next year, but you've got to think about what's going on in his head, and his head is going to be saying, well, this new guy is coming in, and if he performs to the level that the team think he can do, are they going to pick him over me next time around? Well, and this is it as well, because it may be for one week at the moment, but if Lewis Hamilton isn't back from COVID-19 yeah. in Abu Dhabi, then of course, George Russell will get a second week in which to put into practice everything that he's learned in this first race weekend, which will prove difficult for him for George, sorry, that's Jack. George, Jack, <laughs> thank you. Um, and so used to having George down at Williams. Then everybody gets a second weekend to put into, into practice those, all those things that they've learned. So, you know, if he doesn't get the, the, the podium that a lot of people are expecting from him this weekend, he could in Abu Dhabi. I, I, I would be very cautious on that, and I think you agree yeah. as well, that like suggesting that he's going to win or get a podium this weekend, if he does that, that will be a phenomenal achievement. But I don't think that's what he's really looking at the result. He's looking at making sure he does everything the team asks of him, because that's ultimately all that they can ask from him and what it will actually get him a look in at that seat in the future. Yeah, and let's not forget, Valtteri has been firing all season long. Mm -hmm. You know, he's been pulling out brilliant qualifying performances that's made Lewis dig really deep to find that at times only a, you know, a hundredth or a mm -hmm. thousandth of a second that he's beaten him by in, in qualifying. Obviously, there have been bigger gaps on a, a number of occasions, but Valtteri has been racing and qualifying really well. George 36 and 0 in Formula One. If he makes it 37 0, that's the, that's, mate, that's the headline of the weekend, regardless of what happens in the race. If, if he out-qualifies Valtteri, that's huge. That would be one of the most impressive stats if he manages to get ahead of him. To be honest, that might even be job done, you know, because that just shows he's got it when it really matters, when the chips are down on a circuit like this, when yeah. there's going to be traffic issues. If he can nail it there, wow. It's going to be a great weekend. I'm really looking forward to seeing this very, very different circuit mm -hmm. layout. Um, it's also a very interesting weekend, of course, because of everything that happened last weekend and, and everybody's thoughts very much mindful, you know, of the dangers that remain inherent in this sport, but also of the advances in safety. You know, before we close out, I, you know, I want to say, you know, Roman came in today to, to see everyone and thank everyone, including Dr. Ian uh, and Alan van der Merve. I just did an interview with them a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. And they're saying they've already learned lessons from last weekend, their practices and their the, the processes this weekend will be slightly different. The things they carry in the medical car with them will be slightly different from Amazing. this weekend. Bell helmets, who actually have a base over um, the other side of the circuit here in Bahrain, have already brought over for them a development of the helmet, because a lot of people were saying they've got open face helmets, can they have something else? OMP will have a, a higher kind of, uh, sort of a neck uh, covering. Yeah, covering there to, to go up to their nose. And the new Bell helmet will still have the peak that they like, mm -hmm. will still be open face so that Ian can talk to the drivers, but like a fighter pilot, we'll have a flip, visor down, so he can go into the fire if he needs to. That's in three, four days' time. 
they've progressed, they've moved on at the same time as the investigation starts into the accident itself. It's Astonishing. another example, really, of Formula One at its very best, and we should be at the front of innovation. We Absolutely. should be pushing the limits of technology. So I think it's great that we can, we can showcase that and protect the guys who are willing to risk their lives to go and help others. Absolutely. The FIA, you know, really at the forefront of, of progressing the safety in the sport, as they have done uh, for decades. So, uh, yeah, uh, and the good news, Roman is... Feeling fit, feeling frisky, wants to be in the car in Abu Dhabi uh, and was in today and, and, and looking really, really good. Anyway, uh, that is your lot for now, folks. Uh, from Lawrence and me looking towards this Sakir Grand Prix, do you have a prediction? Because uh, still... it's not Lewis this weekend. No, I'm still going to go Max. For I the think. win? Yeah, Max for the win. How about you? I'm going to go George, oh. just, for, just, for, just for giggles. George, or, or, uh, George, George Max Checo podium. Okay, hang on, you've toned it down slightly just then. Have I? Yeah. How? Oh, is in George still first? Oh, or are yeah. you saying those three in any order? Whoa. Still George first. Okay, cool. And then, uh, yeah, and then Max and Checo. All I right. don't know. I'm going to go the other way around. I'm going to say Max, Perez, George. George. Nice. Nice. You can call us out on it later <laughs> on. <laughs> As people will. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in, folks. From Lawrence, from me, uh, from us here in uh, Saki. Bahrain. Bah Saki, whatever. Uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.